you can have it all. It's a human game that you play that you have to give up something for something. In other words, can't have it all. Well, you can have it all. You can have everything that you don't contradict with the next thought. I want it, but I want it, but I want it, but the whole process of deliberate creation is just the clarifying process. So you go as far as you can go and feel good and then give it a rest because if you go further than you can go and it feels good, then you begin to introduce unnecessary resistance to the pile or to the subject. We want to give you this first. It might make this all more streamlined for the conversation. Imagine a pile of sticks. We play a lot with these sticks. We've been saying for a long time that every subject is really two subjects. There's what's wanted on one end and the absence of what's wanted on the other end. And sometimes you think that you've picked up the stick that says prosperity, but what's really active is your feeling of lack of prosperity. And so it feels to you like you're setting goals and you're working hard and you're trying to get this prosperity. When every time you approach the subject, what's active in you is not enough money. And so things do not improve that well. And so recently we've been asking you to think of these sticks in a different way. So here's a pile of sticks and let's pull out the stick that's about prosperity. Let's put prosperity on this end of the stick and let's call this end of the stick the manifestation end. This is the materialized end of the stick. This is the physical awareness of life end of the stick. This is the conditional end of the stick. This is the conditions that I'm wanting to improve end of the stick. And so let's put money on one of the sticks and let's put relationship on one of the sticks and life work as a subject that people are reaching for all the time on one end of the stick. So here are these sticks all engraved with these important subjects. So let's pull that money stick out. And on the other end of the money stick, the non-physical end of the stick, the vibrational end of the stick, the vortex end of the stick, the where your inner being is end of the stick. What's on that end of the stick is not money, because money activates the lack of money in you every time you think about it. That's how you feel about money. On the non-physical end of the stick is freedom, fun, adventure, flexibility, choices. So when you pick up the stick with all those things on the other end of it, when you think about choices and fun and doing fun things, you're less likely to activate resistance. And yet you've picked up that stick that is about prosperity. And so prosperity now is coming to you until you use the word that throws resistance into the mix. Does that make sense to you? So that's our premise. Now let's sort this out. This is a big topic for a lot of people. This is a conversation about energy and the way a lot of people are approaching things. It is so 1980s. It is so goal setting. It is so get hold of what you want and focus upon what you want and don't listen to other people and follow your dream and blah, 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 and all of that stuff. And we agree with all of that. We just think that you're ready for the vibrational version of this. We know for sure that you're ready for the vibrational version of this. That's under the influence or not. In other words, no one can think those thoughts they want to think unless they are in the vicinity of those kind of thoughts. When you take an example of someone else, there are so many people that have had such success, are having such success, that we're feeling discouragement and therefore we're attracting discouragement at some point in their life. But we want you to understand, no one was getting that kind of information from someone who wasn't feeling that way. That was his point of attraction at that time. And so you've got to figure out some way to have a different point of attraction in order for there to be encouraging words come to you. You see what we're getting at? This is not about the action that you offer. It's the vibrational premise or stance from which the action is inspired. And so we just want to get right back to the root, 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 root. We want to get back to what influence are you under and then the information that flows to you, you can take it to the bank. But if you're discouraged, the information that comes to you is not going to be meaningful or worthwhile. It's just going to be more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Did that make any sense? We think that you are a wonderful teacher and uplifter. And often when you hold someone in your gaze, your desire for them is very strong for them to accomplish what they are wanting. But here's the thing. You can't on a dime or with in any quick moment in time or with some words, you cannot change someone's vibration. 
So many analogies that so many people offer just causes them to find resonance with the very thing that's holding them back. This is a vibration that is rampant on this planet because people want to know what they can do that will improve their life experience. What action to take, what to do. In other words, most people are eager to do. They're eager to do. So they try doing this and they try doing this and they try doing this and they often get the same results no matter what they're doing because they're doing it from the same vibrational premise. And so when you step back a little bit and you realize that your wonderful uplifting intention is not so much about what they do but about how they feel which will inspire the perfect doing in the moment. There's so much opportunity to do and some of it will lead to what they want and some of it won't and so how do you sort that out that's the question that's vibrating within you how do you know because someone could have had a bad experience with someone like that and so you want to warn them off of that because that doesn't look like a very good idea to you when in fact it could be exactly what this person is ready for at this moment in time and so if you step away from trying to answer the question about what someone would do how do you want to feel? What is it that you want to feel? It's a wonderful thing to activate within someone. What does a true feeling of prosperity feel like? That's a wonderful thing. But it's also a wonderful thing to activate within them. What kinds of things do you feel the best when you are involved in them? Because you can marry the two and your wisdom is absolutely accurate. And could not be more true. Follow what you want to do. Find something that you really want to do and do it and the money will follow. But there's another question to stick in there ahead of that. How do you find what you really want to do? There are a lot of people that have a sense of what they want to do, but they don't know how to find it. And the reason they don't know how to find it is because they're trying to get there through the doing rather than through the feeling. And so if you're all about how do you feel and you are practiced enough in your own meditation process to show yourself how you can allow your vibration to raise at will anytime you sit and you say, you know, I've got a tool for you, a step for you that you may have not considered or you may have overlooked or you may have misunderstood, but this is where this all starts. And once you get the hang of this, it begins moving really fast. What you want to find is a feeling place that is resistant free. And in finding a feeling place that is resistance free, you're going to tap in not only to the power of the universe, but you're going to tap in to a stream of conscious thought that has been honed and discovered just for you that will guide you step by step into action after action, all of which will be pleasurable on your way to more and more that you really want. When you tune into this, you don't have to have any highs and lows. You don't have to struggle. Most of the people who have made it into great success, the thing that they are most eager to tell you about when you want to talk to them about their success, if you are privy to having a personal conversation, almost all of them will go right back to the struggle that they lived because somehow they still think that that struggle was inherently important to the success that they're now having. And in every single case, we want to say flawed premise flawed premise flawed premise flawed premise it wasn't until you got over that that you started letting the good stuff in all that suffering does to you all that moving in the direction of what you don't want does to you is it in time makes you so weary of making that effort that doesn't work that you finally just give it up and during all the process of all that struggle, you put so much into your vortex that when you finally give up the struggle, then all of this stuff that's all queued up for you begins to flow into your experience. That's where all of that success comes from, from every single one of them. There's not a person on this planet that has had this enormous success that you are all wanting to experience yourself, or at least wanting to note is successful for them, that if we were to visit with them, there isn't one of them that's an exception to what we just said. Every Every single one of them lived enough resistance and in the process created something wonderful. But at some point they stopped focusing in the direction of the resistance. Maybe it was out of weariness. Maybe it was just because it was ridiculous or maybe, and here it is.
Maybe it's because in the process of knowing what they don't want, they know what they do want, they don't want, they know what they do want, they don't want, they know what they do want, they don't want, they know what they do want. And once this vortex gets really going with source energy, non-resisted source energy focusing upon it, when source energy is focused upon what you really want, that will win over your negativity if you have been going after it long enough. Well, that's a struggle that will bring success, but we think it is far more hard work than any of you need to do. Did you hear the distinction that we're making here? Hard work will get you to some of what you want. But why were you depriving yourself of so much pleasure while you were building your vortex when you could have been cashing in your chips any time that you wanted to? And the reason is because you've inherited from the generations before you the flawed premise that you have to struggle and you have to sacrifice in order to have success. And it just is not true. It just is not true. So if you can get someone to realize that they have a vortex and that it is already taken shape and form and you can get them to begin talking about some of the things that they want, then they can activate that. And even in the middle of your conversation, ideas will hatch. That's what a really good masterminding conversation is about. You've had many of those. That's who you are. You're a teacher to the very core of your being, but you're wanting to guide people toward how they feel and then the, the impulse of what they want to do. Just remember your beings, you're not doings, your beings. And let's take it a little further. Your feelers, you're not doers, your feelers, your feelers, your feelers, your tuners, your tuners, you're not doers, your tuners. Your tuners, your sinkers, your calibrators, your calibrators, your energy awareers. You're aware of energy. You are calibrating energy. You're not doers. You take a lot of action if you are inspired to the action, but you don't do to fix things. You do because the feeling is so strong that nothing can hold you back from the doing of that. That's how you want to proceed in this life experience. And it is not that hard. By the time that we've had a few hours together, you'll be chomping at the bit to get out there and just let the universe surprise and delight you with all of the things that you've lined up. You see, we have a lot of knowledge that cannot be expressed until you're ready to receive. And so these new things that have happened as a result of us being together is because of your readiness to allow them to come forth into a forum where words can actually be formed about them. Doesn't that make you feel happy about you? When we talk about co-creating at its best, what we mean is that non-physical part of you who has so much awareness of you and so much feeling for you and gives so much attention to you, who doesn't need you to know it for that attention to be satisfying to us. We can love you. And if you're not in the vibration of love, it doesn't diminish the love that we feel for you. But when you are open to the vibration of that which we offer and you are joining us in that vibration so that it's not bouncing off of you but it's radiating through you it is thrilling to us to feel the impact that you have on the others who are around you when you allow that pure transmission of that pure you to move forward you have no responsibility to raise the vibration of this planet. You were not sent here to fix something that's broken. Nothing is. And you were not sent. You were not sent at all. You didn't come in order to accomplish. It's just a byproduct of being focused in an evolving universe. You can't get it wrong because variety will continue to surround you and new ideas will constantly be born within you. And when those new ideas are born within you, we revel in them because there is nothing more exhilarating to us than new and more and expansion. There is great love here for you. And as always, we remain joyfully in your vortex.